our first question. Okay. So, the question is, do new physical theories always perceive the need to develop new concepts and ideas in mathematics, or can pure mathematics generate new theories in physics? Well, <clears throat> the last time that uh, uh, a large branch of mathematics was developed because of the need of physics was what Newton and the did calculus. <laughs> well, it's true that it's true that there was a philosopher uh, who uh, uh, so well actually you know he's a mathematician who had a hobby of philosophy. Leibniz did a lot of things, and yeah, he actually um, uh, published it at first, but Newton actually came up with the ideas chronologically first. So I just wanted to clarify that. Anyway, uh, but uh, right, so Newton needed <coughs> mathematical tools that didn't exist. Now he he created a big chunk of, of mathematics at the time that evolved into modern analysis. So this was you know really significant. <laughs> um, <coughs> however, because the sciences, all of the sciences, are bound by uh, the current state of technology, in other words, you know, you have to do experiments, you have to test your hypotheses. And in mathematics, um, mathematics is actually disjoint from the real world in, in, some, in the sense that uh, we have a um, collection of axioms that are true by assumption, statements that are true by assumption, right? and rules that we play by. Um, so, uh, Mathematics, uh, whereas at the time, at that time, <clears throat> mathematics and the sciences evolved uh, contemporaneously. Now, I mean, uh, some of the models that are used now uh, were developed quite some time ago in mathematics. Um, ideas in chemistry uh, uh, generated uh, not theory and topology, so that made mathematicians, you know, so the chemists say, hey, there's this problem. Need a model and it doesn't exist. And so topologists developed a knot theory, and now knot theory uh, is of interest to mathematicians. And so there's more mathematics than the chemists needed in the first place. Um, so uh, my my I guess my answer is that um, less and less uh, these days, because mathematics, due to its very nature, doesn't have those constraints. Of having to do experiments, so you can, you know, develop lots and lots of mathematics. But still, some, uh, in fact, just in these the, the past decade, uh, some uh, modern ideas in, in, in physics have generated uh, interest in various areas, including topology, string theory, for example. I think is probably um, the best example of that. <laughs> All right. That's so, can you hear the question one more time just to make sure that I... All right. So, do new physical theories always perceive the need to develop new, new concepts and ideas in mathematics? Or can pure mathematics generate new theories in physics? Um, I think that the answer to that pretty much, in, in my opinion, is no. Um, many times when a, a new physical concept comes up, uh, we will look around in mathematics to see what is there. It's never, not really so much the need anymore to develop new branches or new fields of mathematics, because you know the mathematicians have vetted out their discipline uh, pretty thoroughly. There's, there's, you know, discoveries from the past have have <coughs> aided or maybe brought to light new ideas that needed um, needed addressing from the, the standpoint of mathematics. But um, today, at least, the, uh, the idea comes back with, uh, many times, the, the physicists just take the mathematics that's already there. And sometimes, in ways that make mathematicians cringe, utilize the mathematics. <laughs> um, I think that the, uh, the, other, the other side of the coin there, the do mathematical topics uh, give rise to new physical theory? I think that one's 
at least in my opinion, even less likely to occur because uh, of, the, of, the dis of the disconnect that typically uh, mathematicians are very protective about keeping about their attachment to the real world. Uh, the, the, uh, well, you, you said it yourself. I like to wash my hands. <laughs> so the, um, too many, you know, there, there are a lot of times where mathematicians will maybe have some new element or new piece of mathematics which is, is waiting there to be picked up by a physicist and go, oh, well, this obviously is the answer over here to this problem that we've been looking at. Because of that disconnectedness in, in realizing that um, how a particular field or a particular topic is related back to something uh, on a conceptual level. <clears throat> now, um, if I can think of anything else to add. Do you have anything you want to rebut to? Just go ahead and skip to that. Uh, yeah. Is there anything to talk about? You're good. All right. You're good. Um, yeah. Uh, I, and it, the, the eerie thing, I think, in, in mathematics is that um, that some branches of pure mathematics, you know, uh, it was always thought that, well, at least this is safe. You know, nobody will ever be able to find a use for this. And uh, the number theorists used to brag about that, like they were the last artists left in mathematics, you know. And then the computer comes along, and people are really interested in cryptography, and they get headhunted at graduate school. Because now all of a sudden, the private sector is interested in really big primes. Because you can't, you know, multiply two huge primes together and try to factor that out, you know, and so you your connection is safe, um, and uh, but, but I, you know so there are, are all of these areas. Uh, my own research, you know, oftentimes I tell people that complex analysis is used in uh, 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 fluid dynamics and electrical engineering. You know, I tell them all these things uh, because I know that's what they want to hear. Well, what is this good for? And I used to give a really impassioned speech about you know what. Well, what is the Pieta good for? What are Shakespeare's sonnets good for? It's a beautiful thing in itself. You know? But the glazed eyes told me it was just like going like this. So I said, well, it's using, you know, turbulence <laughs> and uh, you know, aerodynamic. <laughs> but um, the things that I actually prove about um, analytic function spaces, uh, I, they, don't, they have no immediate application, but they probably will in a hundred years. That's sort of the, the, the weird thing. And just one thing I would like to add is, um, in the case of, you know, talking about modern physics, sometimes you pick, you pick a model, and that model has something in it that, that does, what I'm thinking of right now is uh, supersymmetry. You know, does, has anybody ever found a, a Wino or a Selectron or any of those other things? Those partners, super, super symmetric partners, that's all because of solutions to certain algebraic geometry problems. And now the physicists are saying these have to exist because they're in the mathematical model. Not that's all of the them are saying thing. that. Right, not all of them are saying that. Many are, lots and lots are saying that. I mean, uh, you know, people talk about it as if it is established science. So this is a case of. Um, you know, so, so certainly not one huge branch of mathematics, but certain things, like because this, this particular model is working, it fits, you know, other, other parts of the physics, and, well, oops, there's a, you know, you know, it could be this or this, oh, well, how do we reconcile that, and still use the model, uh, is to say, well, each particle has, you know, and then you get to something that is beautiful mathematically, and, um, uh, but I think kind of questionable in science, you know. Is, yeah. so, so there's a case of mathematics pushing science, you know. <clears throat> I don't know if I would say it's mathematics pushing science. Well, it's scientists it's, themselves. Well, it's yeah. Well, it's it all comes down to um, to what happened in in physics uh, a little more than a hundred years ago. Uh, first off, I want to say that I agree wholeheartedly with the idea that. Uh, and it's not just mathematics research, but research in physics doesn't necessarily have to have a, an immediate purpose. It can be there for the simple beauty of wanting to know the answer. I mean, I think it can be said, at least 
right now that the Higgs boson, the discovery of the Higgs boson has changed none of your lives. But knowing that it's there, <laughs> knowing the beauty, you know, that, that, you know, the reason why it's there is, is enough. Having an understanding of, of why mass, why some particles have mass and others don't, it's enough. <laughs> I discovered the Higgs boson. Ron <coughs> Grone is emitted by a portion of the audience. <laughs> they, discovered, they discovered the Higgs boson, which is a decay from the Higgs field. Um, and you're not going to give me that back. You're not going to give me that back in time. You said no one last time. I never remember. Now, um, but what happened in physics about a hundred years ago is that. <laughs> The, the experimentalists were driving the bus, so to speak. So um, what would happen is that the experimentalists would conduct an experiment, and they would come back and say, okay, we found this. And they would come to the theorists in physics and say, why this? And so then the theorists would sit down and pull out their pencils or talk to the mathematicians and come back with an answer. And the, physics, the experimentalists would go back and they would check to see if this works. And this was how things had been done. But with the development of concepts like relativity and, and quantum mechanics, the, the table sort of got flipped, and, and the theorists began to, to drive the bus. The theorists began to say, well, the theory says this. Go find it. And so this has caused a lot of really great leaps forward in science. But it does also cause that problem that I wholeheartedly agree with you about. That sometimes we begin to leave the edge of science for, for what I would consider more pure philosophy here. Um, that so it turns into bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> That's philosophy, right? <laughs> so, you know, what happens there is you, you end up with a situation where you have um, on theories with no immediate means of testing them. Um, you have <coughs> mathematics suggesting the existence of a particle, and we're, we try to find the particle and it have not had success, but people doggedly determined to, to hold on to this theory even in, in the light of, uh, of mounting evidence. <coughs> um. Yeah, so that's the, the thing, you know, so um, if, uh, <clears throat> is, it, is it science then, you know, so that here, so, so right, take Einstein, um, it's, it's really worth noting that Einstein's Nobel was for the photoelectric effect. Mm -hmm. uh, special relativity was 1905, general relativity, less than 10 years later, when did he win the Nobel? I mean, relativity is... Yeah fleshed out as a theory, but he won from the photoelectric effect, so it wasn't until later that there was experimental evidence for general relativity. From 1918, if I remember correctly, so the yeah, solar so eclipse that allowed for the, the, the super power. Mercury, precession of Mercury, I think was the first one, right? Is that right? Um, <coughs> and then more and more, you know, evidence in support of um, general relativity. But then, in the in the in the, like nineteen sixties or or nineteen seventy or something like this, uh, Murray Gell-Mann wins a Nobel Prize for um, quarks and development, along with some other people, of the standard model. And there was no experimental experimental evidence for the existence of quarks. And the Nobel Committee stuck their neck out here the far. So now, last year. Uh, uh, a uh, Nobel for, for the Higgs yeah. last year, 2013. I think it was too soon. Okay, so uh, this is troubling to me. This this I mean, this idea um, that uh, you know this this thing is so it's so pretty and it has to be like yeah go out and find it and go go look for these things. They have to be there. Why do they have to be there? Because look at this. <laughs> it's so uh, beautiful. And so then they're starting to, the scientists are starting to talk like mathematicians. And, see, I, and, and I'm of the opinion that it doesn't have to be pretty. Pretty's nice. Yeah. But you don't always get pretty. 
So, you know, we're all after, um, in, in mathematics, we love elegance and beauty, simplicity. You know, we want, uh, so that's how you can make your choices. I think Occam's razor, uh, I think it's a good rule of thumb in the real wor world, uh, too, to go with uh, the simplest explanation. But <clears throat> when you, you have a model that you just think is, is too beautiful to not be true, then are you doing science anymore? You know, when you're saying, yeah, you have to run these experiments and go and try to find it. I mean, nowadays, how much, if you're, if you're a, a, a particle physicist, then how much money is available to you if you're, doing, uh, if you're going to write papers in string theory? You know, how much if you're going to do something else? I'm uh, concerned about the stifling of free inquiry. If, if, you're, if you're getting everybody to think, in one direction. Well, we have to fix this. You know, we have to. Um, you know, we have this model that we've had for so long, and we want to hang on to it. Um, so, I, do, I do have to say that while they, the Nobel Committee did stick their neck out for the standard model, the standard model has been yes exceptionally. I accurate. think they were lucky. They were will, yeah. Will they they, they were last lucky with uh, with the Higgs with the Higgs the Higgs fields and. And, and even with things like the, 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 the super collider, um, <laughs> to spend so many billions of dollars on this, if they don't find something else, if they don't find one of these symmetric partners, then do they get to build another one of these? And so the, to me, in this aspect, the pressure is really on to try to prove their, their model is correct. Not, and so it's really moved away from the idea of um, the pursuance of, of, of the idea of the free thought and more of letting the money drive, you know, driving towards an answer. The money that's already been committed or money that will be committed down the road. And so I think in that part we're, we're well in agreement. All right. Okay. All right. Second question. <clears throat> 